All right, so in our last video, what we have is our ship moving left and right, and we have boundaries, so it's not passing there. What we need to do now is make uh, an asteroid. So what, was, what we'll do is let's go down here and make a whole new class, okay? And this class will be, let's give it a little space there. Uh, let's call it Meteor. And we're gonna start this the same way. So pygame dot sprite dot sprite capital S for the second one. Okay, and this will be the meteors. Uh, so the attributes attributes for the meteors. Okay, uh, have a define in it self, and then of course that really long line. Pygame dot sprite dot sprite dot underscore underscore in it underscore underscore self. Okay, so just like all the other classes, we need to have an image, okay, here, and we can use a surface for that. And let's make it, uh, let's make it 30 by 30. Okay, it's just a square. And then we'll fill that image with red and self.image.image.fill. And then we need to get a rectangle around the image, so self.image.getRect. Okay, so and now we have to think about where this is going to be. So if we have an image, okay, we want the meteors, and I, I don't really have a drawing here yet for that, okay, but we want the meteors to be falling down, okay, which means that they need to spawn somewhere up here. Um, and we don't want to have them spawn in a specific location, otherwise we'll know exactly where they're coming. It kind of defeats the point of the game, right? So we'll do now self.vect.y, or we'll start with x first, okay? Now, uh, when it spawns, okay, we want to use a random, we want to score randomly on the screen. So random, oops, can't spell random, R-A-N-D-O-M, dot rand range, whoa, Sorry. Okay, and we're going to do this between, now here's the thing, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and I'm gonna just clear out everything. Okay, let's see if I can just do that. All right, and let's do let's insert a shape. Okay, we're using a square this time, right? So we'll make a little square there and then let's fill this little guy like that. Okay, cool. So here, and I always come back to this, okay? This is gonna be zero. This is going to be the width, all right? And from there now, we wanna spawn anywhere from zero, and but we don't wanna spawn anywhere from zero to the width, because if we're spawning the X, remember that, that this right there is your X, okay? So if you spawn between zero and the width, then there's a good chance that it could spawn right there, okay? Because then this could, over here could be your X. Right, so the way that we really want to do this is we want to spawn between zero and whatever the width is minus this width. So we want to go something like this. Okay, we want to do here's the width. And whatever the width is, we want to subtract out this width, this piece. So this is the rect dot width. We have DTH. Okay, so that way it's spawning on the screen. Um, and so we can do that now by saying, where am I here? Right here. Zero, comma, whatever the width of the screen is, minus self.rect dot width. So if the width is uh, 480 and the width of the rectangle is 30, then 480 minus 30 is 450, so for between zero and 450. That way it has that extra space to fill, okay? Same thing now for this, so self.rect.y. We wanna spawn this off the screen above. Now remember, it starts at zero, and it comes down zero, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600 at the bottom. So we wanna spawn below zero, above the screen. Random.rand range. And let's just choose some high numbers. So negative 100 and like 50, comma negative 100. Okay, you won't even see them. They'll be way above the screen. Then we need to have a speed. Okay, so self.rect.y. Oh no, I'm sorry. Self.speedy is really what I should say. And 
they're going to be falling down like this, right? So if we're going at zero, we're increasing as we go down. So let's make the speed 10, all right? And then here we need an update, okay? So we can say self.rect.y plus equals. Okay, so we're moving the rectangle. We're adding on the speed, self.speedy. And so this will create uh, the image moving straight down. Now, of course, if we go ahead and rerun this, nothing will happen, okay? Because just like the other ones, we need to uh, create and put place them in sprites and we need to uh, attach them to the all sprites. So what we'll do here is we'll come down here and we'll say, I'm gonna create Okay, so we had a container for all of the sprites, okay? But we're not gonna just have one meteor, so I'm gonna create um, a container for all the meteors as well. So all meteors is equal to pygame.sprite.group, okay? This will be group all the meteors together. That way I can actually handle, if I just want to solely focus on the meteors, then I have a group that will just update or delete specific meteors in that group without having to affect anything else. All right. Um, and since we're going to spawn more than one of them, because I'm thinking maybe like nine or 10 meteors we can have, right? What we can do is come down here, okay, and we'll use a for loop to create it. So I can sit here and type, you know, I can do like meteor one equals meteor, right? Meteor two equals, me that would just take so long. So what we'll do is we'll create a for loop. So for I in range, okay? And remember that whatever number I, I put here, um, it starts from zero. So it goes from zero through eight. So if I want eight meteors, I'll put a nine. If I want nine meteors, I'll put a, um, if I, I'm sorry, if I want the 10 meters, it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. So I just want 9. All right. So in this, it's going to create nine different things, is what we want to have. So let's create an object for each iteration in the for loop. So we can say m equals meteor. Okay. This is the, uh, we're making an instance of the meteor class. All right. Then once we've created this meteor, let's add it to the all meteors group. Okay. Then in addition to adding it to its own meteor group, let's also add it to the all sprites group. Like that. All right. So this will create nine meteors. Creates nine meteors. Uh, Okay, we can change that number anytime we want. And let's see how this works. Okay, so we have all of that. That actually looks pretty good. All right, so now we have meteors coming straight down. Now notice the way that they came straight down, right? Um, let's go back really quickly. All right, so they were randomly generated, okay? But look at the way that they fall. Just coming straight down, okay? So we don't, that's not cool. We don't want that. So what we'll do is, let's go back and let's change a couple of things, okay? Let's have it, uh, if they're all coming down at the same exact speed, that's no fun. So we'll do random dot rand range, okay? And let's choose a range for that speed. So let's say between two and eight, okay? So you can be going down at slowly at two pixels or coming down fast at eight pixels, okay? And you'll see that that's gonna actually change what it looks like. So some of them are coming faster and some of them are going slower, okay? Um, also, they're coming straight down, so you kind of like know where they're gonna be, and that's no fun. So let's change the orientation now, okay? Here, we'll say self dot uh, speed x, okay? Now, the x only controls the right and the left. Okay, so if we wanted to move to the left, we have to choose a negative number. And if we wanted to move to the right, we choose a positive number. So we can say random dot rand range from negative three to like three. So we're moving to the left by three pixels, or we can choose at maximum to the right by three pixels. And just to make sure that we get that updated there as well, self.rec.x plus equals self dot 
speed x and if you run this you'll see that they will be going all over the place right now if we were to go ahead and just let this play out there's an issue and that issue is well what happens right where all the meteors go so we need to come up with some boundaries here okay and of course i will create a new method for that so we'll call it boundary just the same way that we did up here right we had a boundary method up there we'll do the same thing for the meteors and what this will be is we want to delete and respawn uh s r e s p a w n a the meteor when it goes off the screen All right. Well, we don't actually have to delete it. We can just respawn the meteor, right? You know, there's no need to delete them. Maybe we'll see what happens. Okay. So here's how we're gonna do this. Okay. There are three different ways that this thing can go off, and I'm gonna run the program again so you can see them. You can go either off the screen to the left, to the right, or it goes off to the bottom. All right. So we want to say now if self direct dot right. So if it's going off the right side. Okay, if it's greater than, and I shouldn't say the right side, what I should really say is this. Okay, play annotations. All right, here it is right here. I'm not going to use the word right because we're, I want to see that when this completely goes off the screen, it's really the left hand side that goes off the screen. So we want to say that when this left hand side, goes past the width of the screen and maybe like five pixels more um then we will replace them so if self direct dot left is greater than the width plus five or the other option self dot rect dot right is going to be less than negative five yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna put it up here again so you can see that maybe make this a little smaller right there's no need for it to be that big all right if the right hand side is coming off the screen like this so that's zero that's negative five so it's off the screen and you can't see that or self dot rec dot top which is the top of the of our uh meteor if that is greater than the height plus five then what we'll do is oh we'll delete them self dot kill okay so self dot kill means that this will delete um that meteor from all effort from any group that's currently in so from the all sprites group and from the all meteors group it'll completely just uh get rid of it all right and rather actually there's no really no point to really kill it right because we haven't even hit it so what we'll do is we will say we'll say this self dot spawn new meteor okay now we actually haven't even defined this yet which we're going to do right now um so what we'll do is we'll say that if they go off the screen then we will just move them we'll just spawn them somewhere else all right um actually you know what we will kill them just get them out of the program and just spawn a new one okay so then here another method defines spawn new meteor okay don't forget to put the little self in there and we will say now, how do we spawn the meteors? Okay, we did that over here. We created an object, we added them to the all meteors, and then we added them to the all sprites. So we're literally just going to take this, copy this, paste it, bam, make sure it's all indented properly. All right, and let's see if this works. Okay, so hypothetically, if it goes off the screen, um, then we remove them from all the groups. Then we spawn a new meteor we do that by doing this okay so let's see what's up all right so here we go now right now i can actually go right through them no issues and holy crap what happened shouldn't it have like already spawned um so what do you think happened okay well when we call this if we were to remove this piece here, okay, uh, this is just adding stuff to 
our groups. I'm sorry, I, I totally just did the whole the wrong thing like that. I'm sorry about that because this is just creating an object and this is just adding it. So actually, this is not what we're supposed to be using. Had a massive brain fart. What did we use to actually move it? Um, we move this right here. Bam. Whoa. Okay. So if it goes off the screen, okay, we won't kill it yet. Uh, we'll just spawn them someplace else and we'll do that by calling this method and when it calls this method It will choose a new location on the x-axis. It will choose a new location on the y above the screen Okay, it will choose a random speed that it's going to be falling vertically and then random speed for horizontal movement Okay, and this should be fine Right, so here we go. Bam, 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 bam. And now it's moving it here. It's still not updating the way I would like it to. Uh, let's see. Ah, uh, you know why? Same thing I keep saying all the time. We've never called this function. That's right. So now let's go ahead. Okay. So now we have these here and you'll see that they are repeatedly going through. It's checking the boundaries. Okay. Every single time it goes off the screen on the bottom and to the left and the right, it will call this method. This method will then uh, spawn a new meteor. So we're not, we're not getting rid of the meteor. We're just saying that if it gets down here, just place them back up somewhere else. All right. And so that's pretty much all we need to do for that. And then in the next video, what we'll do is, Hmm, what should we do? I don't know, figure it out.